words of power because we are kings and our words matter. His words are not based on what they did towards him. His words are based on the fact that he is God and God is love. He spoke those words because that's the way he is. He's love. It doesn't have anything to do with what they did. It has everything to do with what he is and who he is. So I say to you, as he is, so we are. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases his mercies never come to an end they are new every morning new every morning Great The Christian and the world are so totally different. Everybody ought to know. They must see it. In the workplace, they must see it. In your company, they must see it. In the church, they must see it. You know, in the place where you live, they must see it. In your family, they must see it. They must see that the Christian, he's a Christian. This man is a Christian. He's a different person. He's a person who believes in Jesus Christ. Therefore, the mark of that person, the thing that marks him as different is the love, the love of God, an unusual love, a love that normally human beings do not possess, a love that can only be obtained by being born again, right? So we're talking about dwelling in love. Dwelling in love means this. Are you living in love? 
Is your life governed and controlled by love? Is love the major factor, the central thing, the controlling factor in your life? That's what he's talking about, right? Now, what is... Let's, um, uh, let's go to 1 John 4 again. He goes a little deeper here. Look at John going a little deeper in verse 17. He says, as he is, because as he is, verse 17 towards the end, he, say, he gives all these things and tells us to live in love. He says, because as he is, we are, so we are in this world. As he is, so we are in this world. After talking about loving one another, he says, the reason I'm telling you is, essentially, this is the thing. Because as a Christian, you are in this world as he is out there in heaven. We are living in a world of time and space. He is living in a world of eternity, out of this world of time. But we are as we are. Uh, we are as he is. As he is out there, we are here in this world. Whatever he is, whatever he is like, that is what we are like right now in this world of time and space. That's what he's saying. Now, what does that mean? <laughs> Let me explain this. What is God like? Turn with me to Matthew's Gospel, chapter four, uh, 5. The Sermon on the Mount gives us a wonderful example of how we ought to be as he is. 5, 45. Chapter 5, verse 45. That you may be the sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and he sends rain on the just and on the unjust. God is one who shines the sun on the, on the uh, good and the evil, and uh, sends rain on the just and the unjust. The good and evil experience God's grace. In Christian teaching, there is something called common grace, as opposed to saving grace and all that. Common grace is grace that is available even to a sinner. You know, sinners shaking their fist against God and talking about God, cursing God out, still breathing, you know. That's the grace of God. <laughs> still in his house it rains. Still he plants something and it grows. Still certain things work for him. Still sun is shining every day for him over his house. You see, things are happening just like it happens to a believer because the common grace is given to provide for man's basic necessities sufficiently because God is a gracious God. Even in this fallen world, the earth is filled with the fullness of his grace. With the goodness of God, the earth is filled with. In a fallen world, people that don't even think about God, don't even give thanks to God, don't even, are not even thankful to God. God says, go ahead, enjoy all my blessings. As far as the earth remains, there will be sowing and reaping. I'm not going to cut off that law. I'm not going to cancel that law. We cancel that one law, we are finished. Nothing we sow, will re we will reap, you know. There will be no food. He said, no, 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 as long as earth is there. I know you've sinned, but as long as earth remains, the law of sowing and reaping will be there. God is gracious. That's what is called common grace. He doesn't give that grace because people have been good. No, people have been bad. He says, nevertheless, I give you that. Right? So what does this mean? As he is, so are we in this world. Let's give it more meaning there and understand it more properly. There. It means that the attitude of benevolence that we see in God here in verse 45 of Matthew 5, that upon the good and the evil and the just and the unjust, he makes the sun to shine and the rain to come down. That means God is benevolent. He's, he's got good intentions. He's graceful. He's kind. He's merciful. That benevolence must be a part of our life. So we can say several things like this so we can understand it more properly. It means that our attitude towards other people is not determined and controlled by what they are, but by what is in us. Our attitude towards others is, should not be controlled by 
what they are or what they have done to us or towards us. But it should be controlled by what we are or what we have in us. What do we have in us? We have the love of God in us. We have Jesus in us. We have the Holy Spirit in us. We are born again. We are a new man. We are a new creation. So our attitude towards others must be an attitude of benevolence. Why? Because our attitude towards them is not based on what they do or what they did against us or towards us. It is based on what we have inside of us. We have the same nature as God. Just as He reigns, He causes rain to come down upon the just and the unjust and causes the sun to shine on the good and the evil and the ugly. We also do the same. We show, we behave gracefully, kindly, mercifully, graciously, even towards those who do the same toward us. That's the way you can say it. We are, as he is in this world, so we are in this world. As we live, we don't live like everybody else. We live like him. As he is, so we are in this world. Amen? Our attitude towards others is not determined by what they do. It is determined by who we are in Christ and that the love of God is in us, that we are a new man, we are a new creation. This is the essence of the gospel, you see. This is the essence of the cross, the message, the Christian message. The cross tells this. Look at him. He hung there. They nailed him. They laughed at him. They spit on him. Laughed at him. Pierced him on the side. Nailed his hands and legs. And he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. His words are not based on what they did towards him. His words are based on the fact that he is God and God is love. He spoke those words because that's the way he is. He's love. It doesn't have anything to do with what they did. It has everything to do with what he is and who he is. So I say to you, as he is, so we are in this world. Right? Secondly, you can look at it like this. Because as he is, so we are. Must be understood this way. Think about this. God did not consider himself or does not consider himself, does not consider his honor, does not consider his glory and prestige and power and all of that as anything important. Rather, he considers our plight, our misery, and our need for deliverance and salvation. That's what salvation message is. If God looked at us and said, no, I'm not going down for those dirty guys, you know. They are so filthy, they are so mean, so ugly, so such sinners. They do not deserve anything good. You know, actually, we all deserved, because we were sinners, we all deserved nothing from God. Only thing we deserved was punishment. But he looks at us, he does not, he does not look at us in that way. He does not consider his, uh, himself, his power, his prestige, his honor, everything. He sends his son, he comes in the human flesh and lives his life here, humiliated in this earth, suffered, even a, even we would not have ever suffered like that. He suffered like that, humiliated to the utmost. Went through all of that. Never once complained about how, who he was and what he was and, and what these people were doing to him. He never cared about himself. Never considered himself, only considered us. That's what he, that's what he is like. As he is, so we are. If you're, always a per if you're always a person who's considering our thing, you know. See, in this world, that's one big problem. You know, you'll find it everywhere in your workplace, everywhere you'll find this, this thing. Our ego. Ah, you know who I am. You know what degrees I've got. You know how long I've been working here. You know, you know what I can do to you. You know. It's always our prestige, our honor. We don't even want to come down one little step for another person, you know. We don't want to ever uh, do anything that will damage our status, you know. 
<laughs> the ways in which this thing manifests is so, you know. I remember one time, a fellow's desk was dirty. Yeah. It was just dusty. I said, why don't you clean this up? You're going to sit in this dirt? He said, I don't clean tables. So for cleaning tables, you have to have a separate person, you know. Uh, I don't want to clean tables because if the next man will think something about me if I took a, uh, you know, piece of clothing and, and dusted it, wiped it clean, they'll think, you know, what is this guy? He doesn't know how to behave, you know. We are so thing, we so care about our prestige and our everything. God never cared. He only cared about us. Even though we were unworthy sinners, He cared only about us. Our plight, our misery, our need for salvation, that's what He cared for. It doesn't matter how hard He had to come down, how much He had to suffer, how much He had to give up the glory in heaven and all of that, and come down here and take on human form and live in this world, this evil, ugly, mean world, and go through all that. He said, never mind. I don't mind that as long as I can say. I'll tell you, just imagine if a husband is like that in a home, what will happen? <laughs> that he didn't care for his own prestige, he didn't care for his own honor and all of that, but he's willing to come down and be that kind of a person. I'll tell you, the home will become like heaven <laughs> as he is, this guy is in this world, eh? right? <laughs> as who is, as God is, as Jesus is, this guy is in this world. Just imagine if a wife would do that, you know. Sometimes there's a tremendous competition between the two, you know. <laughs> God said, dominate together, but now they're dominating one another. You know, the woman, you know, is told, if you don't dominate, he will dominate, so you get ahead of him. <laughs> And the man is told the same thing, you know, watch out, she looks like a dominating woman. So you better step up your thing and, and be on the watch out and do dominate her and put her under control. This competition is going on. And this competition is what tears up marriage. You know. It tears up life. It makes family and family life hell, you know, hell on earth. <laughs> it is hell on earth because for everything they have to, they are in competition. If I cook, you wash. If I wash the clothes, you clean up the place. And Pilla said, we believe in 50-50, brother. That's fair. Fair and square, 50-50. He does 50, I do 50. I am not going to come down one little bit. These men are so evil, you know. I'm not 50%. Whatever I do, he must do 50%. I said, surely your marriage is going to fail. Marriage is always 60, 40, 70, 30, 80, 20, like that. Someone has to do more than the other. Then only it will work, you know. The problem there is the same thing, you know. We care about ourselves, our ego, our thing. I don't want to come down. You come down, you know. You can come down. I don't want to. You know who my granddaddy was, you know. You know what kind of family I come from. You make me do <laughs> We Christians ought not to talk about granddaddies and all that. You know, we have to talk about who is God. God never cared about himself. If God did that to us, we would not be sitting here smiling, you see. God said, never mind. I don't care about my prestige, my honor, my glory. All those things, I don't care about suffering there. I don't care about going down there and taking human flesh on me and living in that way. I don't care about that. I'll do it because I don't care about myself. I care about only their misery and their trouble and the problem that they're undergoing. See, as he is, so are we. Are you there? <laughs> as he is, so are we. It'll solve a lot of problem immediately. If you carry this policy to be your policy in life, as he is, so am I. I'm going to, in every situation, think what he will be like. That's what I'm going to be like in this world. Then we totally become another person. It doesn't matter. 
we can come down several steps. We can, he came down all the way down. <laughs> from heaven, from the topmost position, he's God. He became a cursed one on the cross. How, how low can you come than that? And we just need to come one or two steps down. If you just came one step down itself, peace will come. <laughs> Many times it just takes one step down. But that's what keeps them separated, you know. One step, no step, no. I'm not going to do it. Don't ask me for, let her come down one step. Let her father come down one step. Let everybody in her house come down one step. <laughs> just one step. Very easy, just step down and say, all right. I'm, you know, I'm willing to, everything will be solved, totally. You can go home and smile at one another and live happily ever after. But just this one issue stands in between. As he is, so are we in this world. Amen? Everybody says that, as he is. As he is. So am I in this world. And go even one more step further and describe this. When we see others, we must see them like God sees them. As lost souls in need of salvation. We must feel sorry for their flight, plight. And we must see them as victims of sin and Satan. This is how God sees us. That's how he saw us. That's how he came down. That's how he loved us. That's how he gave his life for us. So when, I, when we see people, instead of seeing them as our competitors, we must see them as God sees them. Lost souls. People don't understand. People that don't comprehend anything. People that are under the power of the devil, under the power of sin. So they are incapable of behaving in any other way. They are enslaved by sin and Satan. So they behave. See, when Jesus was crucified, normal people would not have crucified him. That day something happened. The devil inspired the people so that they said, free Barabbas, who is the common criminal, and the number one criminal, like Virapan, you know. <laughs> they said, free him. Crucify this guy. Who is this guy? Healed the sick, raised the dead, fed the hungry, did only good things. You cannot point on to one bad thing that he did. Crucify him. You got to be crazy. Are you out of your mind? Do you really want to release that that criminal, so he can come into town, rob and murder and do all those things, and you want to kill this man so that we will have no one to heal and deliver people? People were mad, raging mad. Kill him, crucify him. Pilate couldn't understand what was happening. What's wrong? He tried to manage the situation, but couldn't. The demand was so great. Gave in to the majority demand, you know handed him over to, to be crucified. Yet God loved those people, those very people. I bet in the Jerusalem church there were many who cried crucify him in the church, washed by the blood of Jesus, saved, delivered, following Jesus now. You know, because thousands were there in the church. God loved them. Why did he love them? Because he saw them differently. He saw them as lost souls. And it's our job to see people as lost souls who don't understand and how that they do those things because of that. That's the way we can love them. Thanks be to God who always causes us triumph in his name. Thanks be to God Says us to win. Yeah. Thanks be to God who always causes us triumph in his name. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. We have overcome. Hallelujah. Try
just try your fittest name and speak Who always causes us to win? Yeah, and speak God Who always causes us to try your fittest name and Clap speak our hands and say Thanks be to God, we have overcome, hallelujah, hallelujah, we have overcome by the power of your name, Jesus, you're the one, hallelujah, hallelujah, the one who made a way for us to triumph in the name. Everything will be all right, all right. They got the victory. Everything will be all right. We're on the winning side. They got the victory. Everything will be all right, all right. We got the victory. Everything will be all right. We're on the winning One more time. side. We got the victory. Everything will be all right. Alright, we got the victory, everything will be alright, cause we're on the winning side, we're on the winning side, we have overcome, hallelujah, hallelujah, we have overcome, by the power of Jesus, you're the one, hallelujah, hallelujah, the one who made a way for us, he made a way for us, the one who made a way for us, try.